Uh, Mr. Volz, followed by Mr. Barnaby, followed by Mr. Michael um, Behan. Good morning. I'm Charles Volz. I'm affiliated with the Community Coalition on High Speed Rail. I first want to point out that there is a gigantic gamble that lies at the heart of the new business plan. And that concerns the lack of available or identifiable funding for the what's called the initial operating segment. That's the part that would extend from the initial Central Valley project to either uh, San Jose or to uh, San Fernando Valley. There is nothing more in fancy language than a hope and a prayer how that money might be achieved. It ranges in something like 25 to 30 billion dollars. It is absolutely critical. If that money is not available, this project will die on the vine and will be left with something that will approach the notorious train to nowhere. In effect, you're rolling the dice with public funds. You're betting on the come. That's dangerous in Las Vegas. It's even worse as a matter of taxpayer money. It's not responsible public policy. Finally, I would say that this is a new plan that is not what the voters approved. If the same laws applied to this board that apply to most businesses, this would be the biggest bait and switch in California history. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Volz. <laughs> Mr. Barnby. Uh, I'm Don Barnby. I've seen the new business plan, and sad to say, it's a different shade of lipstick on a white elephant. Financially, HSR is far worse than 200 cylinders. It will also increase California income tax 10% forever. And this disaster is laid directly at the feet of the California Democrats, and I'm a Democrat, and I don't like that. <clears throat> we need desperately to spend our treasure on jobs for education, for our children and our workforce, and to spend for labor, for construction of schools, and, delay, and decaying local infrastructure. Those have lasting real benefits. The promised benefits of HSR are fiction. One example, energy efficiency myth. Increasing transit speed by a bit more than two times, that is like 80 to 200 miles an hour, requires an exponential power increase of six and a quarter times due to wind drag at sea level. That's reality. That's physics 101. You guys can't change that. The Chinese are finding this out the hard way. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, next we have Mr. Bean, followed by Ms. McGinn, uh, followed by Ms. Nayak. Good morning, members of the board. Michael Behan, City of Palmdale Public Works Department. Um, we believe in this project wholeheartedly. And we want to be a partner in this project. We've, uh, we've been approached by the board and by the staff regarding our vision, our vision for uh, a station and also for how the alignment will fit into the Antelope Valley. And we've provided significant documentation to show that vision to the board. So um, we also have significant support from our MPO, Southern California Association of Governments, our local CTC, MTA and also Los Angeles County Supervisor Mike Antonovich's office. This project will reduce VMT, reduce greenhouse gases, and will help our region meet our air quality conformity standards. And most of all, it will help us address our transportation needs. When you compare all these issues collectively, the Antelope Valley alignment is much more superior over the Grapevine alignment. And with that, we would ask that the board, when the decision comes down, to reject the grapevine, further study of the grapevine as part of the EIR, and focus on the Antelope Valley alignment and the Palmdale Station. We would like to extend uh, an invite to the board when this decision comes out regarding the grapevine to hold a meeting in the Antelope Valley. Um, we, we put that out there. We'd like to reiterate that today. And we just want to, again, emphasize that we support this project and want to be a partner. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Bean, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, Ms. McGinn, as I said, uh, followed by Ms. Nayak. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Ms. McGinn. 
Hello, Betsy McGinn, um, board member, Community Coalition on High Speed Rail. Nice to address you and see you today. I am not here on behalf of the Community Coalition, though. I'm on, here on behalf of three Southern California groups that could not be here. The Rancho Bernardo Community Council, the San Pasquale Lake Hodges Planning Group, and the Rancho Bernardo Community Planning Board, who oppose this project for the same fiscal, environmental, and feasibility reasons that so many of us do in this room. I'm doing this because I want to make sure that you know that as we've been characterized in the past as a handful of NIMBYs from the peninsula, we are among many friends now. I've been addressing this board as a rotten apple for longer than many of you have been on this board. So we are here and we're here to stay to make sure this project is either done right or not at all. Yesterday, I was reading on the Capitol Alert that we are on track for another $2.5 billion budget cut for the state which will affect education and social services. So I want to ask you, which one of you will be the ones to tell teachers that their jobs are less important than construction? Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. McGinn. Uh, Ms. Ms. Nayak, uh, am I pronouncing that correctly? It's Nayak, but it's okay. I'm sorry. You've got a tough job. <laughs> So hi, my name is Nadia Nayak and I'm a co-founder of CARD, Californians Advocating Responsible uh, Rail Design and our website is calhsr.com. Um, I'm talking about uh, item number four, which is we're asking the board to defer approving the funding agreement until as late as possible and use the extra time to review it carefully. The funding plan requirement in AB 3034 was the foundation of the bill. It anticipated building in segments but set requirements in the law to ensure that when you start a segment, you have all environmental clearances and, that the, mon and the money to complete it. The legislators just didn't just want an initial construction segment. They wanted a usable segment and made a funding plan for a segment and a requirement before construction dollars would be made available for even one mile track. The law carefully defines what a usable segment is. The initial construction segment would not be one. The initial operating segment might be one. The plan, you, it, the plan is supposed to be entirely about the IOS, not the ICS. And the funding plan before the board chooses to apply certain criteria to the IOS and some to the ICS. This does not seem to comply with the letter or the spirit of the law. You're about 20 to $25 billion short. We encourage you to take time to submit your plan for the May revise. And why not use the extra time to have some of the foreign experts give you real ridership analysis on whether the IOS will actually be self-sustaining. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, our next speaker is Ms. Kathy Hamilton, followed by Mr. Les Clark, followed by Mr. Bill Thatcher. Hello, I'm Kathy Hamilton. I'm also a board member of CCHSR in the Bay Area. Nadia Nyack stole my thunder, but I agree with everything she said. But I would, I'll address something else then, since there's so much to choose from. In the um, 2008 business plan, the cost was 33.6. The dollars were coming from, of course, the state, 9 billion, 12 to 16 from federal funds, 6.5 to 7.5 private investors, and 2.3 from local entities. If you look at those ratios, and uh, I also read part of the business plan, and they said that uh, private investment would be about 20%, and we certainly have a stop on the $9 billion, so there's no increase in that. So if, the, if I took the ratios, it would come up that the feds would have to give us $62 billion and $9 billion from the state, private investors 19.7, and local 7.5. These numbers are unrealistic. Even though you say in your plan, uh, the new plan, that governments can contribute many times up to 80%, the country has no stomach uh, for this type of spending today, and I ask you not to go forward with this. Press the pause button and look at it before you ruin lives of people on something that is not necessary in the state today. Thank, Thank you, you. ma'am. Uh, Mr. Mr. Les Clark, uh, followed by Mr. Bill Thatcher. It may be Thacker. 
Good morning. My name is Les Clark, uh, uh, Tea Party Patriot. I'm also a registered civil engineer in the state of California. Uh, Ms. Nyack actually did a great job in introducing the topic, the specific topic that I want to talk about today. Um, but I'd like to uh, expand on that. Um, she talked about making sure that the, the rail authority's selection of each individual corridor, route, and segment is consistent with not only the letter of the law or a convoluted um, interpretation thereof, but also the spirit of the law. Each, the law indicates that each segment, each usable segment, must not include any operating subsidies. Yet you plan the initial construction segment, and then you plan on constructing it and then turning it over to Amtrak. Amtrak is heavily subsidized. Ninety million dollars a year goes into the California uh, subsidies of, the, of uh, Am California Amtrak. Um, they carry uh, San Joaquin carries about 930,000 passengers a year. Yet you claim when the IOS is completed, either north or south, that you will have an immediate 3.8 million riders. So we don't. Uh, th this board has not. Um, Say, uh, solved its credibility problems with its current business plan. The business plan does need to be reviewed and vetted and verified and um, uh, by a peer group, not just a peer group that's selected by the law, which I understand you're... Um, Thank uh, you, sir. Appreciate right. it. Uh, next, Mr. Thacker, and then um, Mr. Fukuda. Uh, my name is Bill Thatcher. I'm a taxpayer, a voter, and a member of the Tea Party Patriots. I've been a businessman for many years, and I've prepared and reviewed many business plans. So I tend to look at your business plan from that perspective, and that's the way I'd like to, to, to talk about it. This plan would never get you through the front door of a bank, and it certainly would not get you any money. And there, among the reasons are that your revenue projections are speculative, and you present no overall cash flow analysis of this project. You discuss net profit. Or you do not discuss net profit. You only discuss operating profit. Well, net profit is the profit after your debt service. Your debt service in this plan is, treated, is not treated seriously, and when it is, it's speculative. If you want to go ahead with this project, you need a truly independent, outside review, not a peer group, to review this and provide uh, their opinion and a full cash flow analysis because the way it's structured now, the actual true cash costs of this project uh, are not revealed in the business plan. So you need to do that analysis in order to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fukuda, followed by Mr. Richard uh, Valley. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon or uh, late morning, uh, Chairman and Board Members. Um, um, thank you for having me here. Uh, yesterday I had an interesting conversation with one of our farmers, and he brought up a good point. Um, you know, you released the business plan, and you likened it to when a politician gets in trouble. You know, he did something naughty. He, he made a mistake. They come out and they immediately say, oh, my gosh, I did something wrong, but let's move on, and hoping nobody will look back at what he actually did or what actually is going to happen. And I think that's what happened here. You put out a business plan and said, hey, look, the number's huge. I mean gargantuan. I hope you guys don't really care, and I hope you guys don't look back at what happened. But I think it's important to look back at what happened, because if we look back, we went from 33 to 48 to 98, and I, I know we're going to be above that. Because what I'm looking at this as a civil engineer is, is you're processing this project with 15% of the knowledge versus, and so there's, somewhere upwards of 75% of the information that you're not looking at. And we've talked to your staff about that in the past and invited your staff to come down and talk about that, and we're still not getting that cooperation. Hence, you get the kickback from the Kings County residents. You're not talking to us. You're not listening to us. We brought you the information. Fortunately, I think the relationship's broken down pretty good. I, I started on 50 pages into your document. I'm sorry, it's the same glossy material. The numbers may be different. The, the spin is still the same. So, and um, I'm, I'm here to represent the people. I'm not stepping away from this because there are good people that are going to be hurt by this project and you're not listening to them. So before I leave, thank, I want to ask the audience because we're kind of tired right now. We need to stretch. 
If you do um, not like what's the, going on, please next, stand up. Great. All right, next speaker, um, Mr. Volley, I believe, and then followed by uh, Mr. Greg Gratzka. Good morning, sir. Uh, Richard Valley. Over the last year, Kings County folks have come before you with their concerns, uh, representing themselves and their, and their neighbors regarding impacts that this project would have to their lands, their homes, and their farms. And they've also come before you and asked that you work more closely with government of Kings County. As a county representative, I'm here to tell you that those concerns are real, those concerns are valid. Also, my experience as an elected official in Kings County, uh, coming into office in 08, I fully supported high-speed rail. But, but I've also listened to the same folks and the same concerns that you have, and I chose to work with those folks in Kings County. And since then, I've cast a vote in opposition to high-speed rail. A few weeks ago, the Kings County Board of Supervisors voted unanimously on a resolution to oppose to oppose high-speed rail. You are aware of that. Uh, I wanted to support this project. My friends and colleagues from Fresno County, Tulare County, usually when we're here in Sacramento, we're, we stand together and we fight for issues that we believe in. High-speed rail has divided us, and you should recognize that. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And I would ask that you choose to work with Kings County so that together we can put those flames out. In closing, I'd like to ask, we would like to ask that the governor and the legislature demand that you do just that. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, before Mr. Gratzka, I, I just looked through uh, the remaining green uh, submissions, and there are uh, 24 people who are remaining. There's been plenty before, but there's 24 people remaining from the organization known as California High Speed uh, Rail Accountability, and there are uh, nine from the Tea Party. So uh, we're going to take you all, but, but we've just seen by uh, a show of you standing up who's opposed to the project. So uh, again, if you've got something new to add, that's great. If you want to just go ahead and adopt someone's for example, if you're from California High Speed Accountability, High Speed Rail Accountability, and you hear that one of the 23 speakers uh, before you has said what you have to say, you can go ahead and adopt it. Okay. Uh, and also, let me recognize uh, one of our past chairs, uh, Fran Flores. Fran, we miss you, uh, and uh, we welcome you here today. Thank you. All right, Mr. Gratzka. Okay. Greg Gatzka, Kings County Community Development Agency Director. And uh, we have spent uh, countless hours reviewing both of your project uh, level EIR and EIS documents uh, to answer the questions that Kings County has had, basically because your staff and consultants have been unwilling to share that information. And I'll specifically point out June 7th when Jeff Abercrombie came to our board and said that we can't answer those questions, wait until the EIR EIS documents are released. That is the start of where Kings County realized that the High Speed Rail Authority was not working with Kings County. From those uh, findings, we found that uh, both those documents are inadequate and incomplete in their project analysis, their project details, and mitigation coverage. So as a result, there are unmitigated costs associated with both your project level EIRs. Those costs obviously are then no, not factored into your business plan, which is a foundation for your cost estimates that go into the business plan. As a result, that probably means that your costs are going to be even greater. Right now, California is still recovering from the subprime mortgage fallout that has devastated our local economies. The thing that California communities cannot afford at this time is a subprime high-speed rail project that is still not shovel-ready <clears throat> and has not been developed in accountability in an accountabil accountable manner. So our communities, California communities, deserve better than this. We expect that this high-speed rail authority should look into those details and be forthcoming and, and uh, honest with the information. Thank you. Uh, next, Ms. Gloria Coelho, followed by Mr. William Davis, followed by Glenda Dwyer. Gloria Coelho, Kings County. As the HSR project meanders and cuts across the more financially feasible agricultural land to save project costs, 
This adds cost to our agricultural businesses that will face increased costs in producing commodities, our food, when transportation routes are disrupted, rail construction divides agricultural properties, and temporary construction activities disrupt agricultural practice. I had planned on a, a farming income to supplement my retirement. Instead, I will have farming debt. I would rather spend the money to help law enforcement and lower college costs for our kids. This project needs to stop. I was thinking on the way up here, having just recently retired from the prison system, that in California, you might as well be a criminal. We have no money to uh, house you in jails and prisons. But we are going to provide you with a, a high-speed rail. All you have to do is steal the money to ride it. Uh, Mr. Davis, but before Mr. Davis goes, uh, then Mr. Excuse me, Glenda Dwyer, uh, both from the Tea Party, uh, and then Mr. Ozzy or Ms. Ozzy Fernandez from California High-Speed Rail Accountability. Uh, in order for us to conduct our business today. I'm going to cut the public comment period now down to one minute. Um, so, Mr. Davis, go ahead. Okay. Um, now, you cut me down. It's, let's see. Last meeting we had at the Tea Party, I'm from the Bakersfield Tea Party, and we tried to decide what we would do in order to support this uh, high-speed rail. And the two things we came up with was to have the administration, administrators now that are in charge fired and replaced them with Ann Rand's uh, Dagny Taggart. So those are the, that and also using uh, the um, pension fund from all the state employees to pay for this. Those are the two uh, qualities that we came up with. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Ms. Ms. Dwyer. Um, Ms. Dwyer will be followed by seven other people from the Tea Party. Then Ms. Uh, Ms. Ozzy Fernandez. Good morning, Glenda Dwyer, a proud member of Kings County Tea Party, Central Valley Tea Party, and ultimately Tea Party Patriots. I choose to speak to Governor Brown because you've not listened to Kings County at all, so I'd just be wasting my time. Uh, Governor Brown, do the right thing. End the project. You recently signed the bill to release non-non-non-prisoners into our communities and made them less safe because there is no money. You've chosen to get rid of uh, police officers in the state of California because there is no money. You've made our communities less safe. Yet the cost of $98 billion dollars for fi of 500 miles of track, not train, is sound judgment and fiscal responsibility. Our vision should be for our children and not a track to nowhere. Mr. Governor, come to your senses. Retire the board that's in front of me. Bring back Thank private you, business um, and bring our people back to work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I believe it's Miss. Is it Miss or Mr. Ozzy Fernandez? Mr. Ozzy Fernandez, followed by um, ATS Fukuda. My name is Ozzy Fernandez. I'm a second generation dairy farmer from Kings County. Um, the new Hanford West route goes right through my family's dairy and farmland, uh, putting us pretty much out of business. Um, some of the concerns I have with the project are uh, the EIR doesn't, doesn't address the cost of a, a relocating impacted dairies. Um, the cost of filing uh, new zoning permits, building permits, re relocating businesses including EIR, site plan studies, building plans. Also on the farming side, the yard I doesn't address the cost of lost agriculture production. Um, it doesn't address the relocating of irrigation wells or pipe. Um, on the job side of things, we employ 10 employees and we are only a tiny speck of the project. Um, what are the real estimates of existing business and displaced jobs and estimated duration of the time of businesses are reestablished if they ever are? Thank you, sir. Yeah. 
Mr. A.T.S. Fukuda, followed by Maureen Fukuda, followed by Todd Fukuda. Mr. Chairman, my name is Otz Fukuda from Hanford in Kings County. Uh, I don't know how many times the board has to listen to this is not a financially efficient project. Uh, it's Everybody that's gotten up here has told you that it is financially a disaster, and yet the board goes through it. But what really bothered me was I was at a Bakersfield hearing, and one of the board members said that this was to look for the future for my kids and grandkids. Well, you know what? I wouldn't wish this on any of my kids or grandkids because they're going to have to take the grunt of the punishment on paying this thing off. And I don't know where you could say that this thing is a viable solution to transportation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Ms. Maureen Fukuda followed by Todd Fukuda followed by Frank Oliveira followed by Elsie Oliveira. Thank you for the correct pronunciation of our name. It's been construed very differently at, at times. Anyway, um, we hear about this at our dinner table. Arius, our son. So we hear about it all the time. I'm going to give you my slant. I'd like to compare the board, the governor, and his team to medicine men from the past who used to sell snake oil as a panacea for everything. What's so different? You're trying to sell this high-speed rail as a panacea to all our ills. We've had things that we need for technology like, as Mr. Valine says, the uh, space. Well, they're phasing down. So we need to look carefully at it. $100,000 is a hard pill to take. It's very expensive to buy that snake oil and it may not work. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fukuda. Uh, Todd Fukuda, followed by uh, Frank Oliveira, followed by Elsie Oliveira, followed by Heather Oliveira. Hello, I'm Todd Fukuda. I'm a homeowner in Hanford, California, and more proudly a resident of Kings County. I would like first to comment on an inappropriate comment Mr. Valines made to Mrs. Peck at a CSUF uh, function last Thursday, which the video is online. You can find it on YouTube. I think the board should know what your representatives are doing, saying, and how they are conducting themselves. My comment as a concerned Kings County resident is that the draft EIR EIS defers mitigation analysis on many of the impacts that will affect not only Kings County property owners, but Kings County government and county staff resources and fail to resolve conflicts with the county's general plan and I ask you, don't worry about how many Tea Party members are CCHSRA. Give us 90 seconds. Listen to us, because we're here. We traveled several hours to get here. So take the time. Don't worry about numbers. We have all day. We'll be here. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Frank Oliveira uh, on deck. Elsie Oliveira, then Heather Oliveira, then Mr. Glenn Parsons, Janine Parsons, and Brent Parsons. I'm not going to spare any blows here because you've given us 60 seconds. We're starting this again. In July, you didn't let us talk. You issue, a, you issue minutes here that said we didn't get the opportunity to talk. You made a decision to not let us talk. You decided. In August, you came back and called a bunch of people to speak that you didn't invite to be here who weren't here so that you made this sound like you cleaned it up. Kings County's documents there were submitted early in the game. You've pushed us to the back of this, and you've given us 60 seconds to talk. This is ridiculous. The governor has to stop this. The legislator, legislature has to stop this. This is a survey marker in Kings County. Okay, it looks like the route's predetermined, that you're still doing work on that route. You're still surveying. Here's one for each of you, and I'll give them to you. To make this go fast for you, Proposition 1A is not what you're building now. 
Build thank, Proposition thank 1A. Thank you, Mr. Oliveira. I'm not uh, done. Next, Ms. Elsie Oliveira. Okay. Proposition 1A is not being adhered okay. to. Last thank you, sir. Last issue. Right. The Kings County Board of Supervisors, representing the people of Kings County, that you're not working Ms. with, Elsie has Oliveira issued to come forward. This, this document. Thank you, sir. Ms. Elsie Oliveira, then uh, Helen Oliveira. Okay. After, after Heather Oliveira, uh, then uh, Glenn Parsons, Janine Parsons, and um, Brent Parsons. Go ahead, ma'am. Mr. Umberg, um, several times today you have invited this group to send letters stating their concerns and that you assured us that they would be read and answered. The past month I have written four letters to the full board and I have not heard from you yet. So I tend to think that you are not telling us the truth. The governor and legislature needs to end this attack on family farms, on agriculture, and on our agriculture economy. You are not familiar with agriculture. You think that you can walk over us and that we will lay back and let you do that. We can't. We can't let you do that. We have our livelihoods to think about. Agriculture will lose jobs. You say that there will be jobs. Agriculture will lose jobs. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next, Ms. Heather Oliveira, followed by Glenn Parsons and Janine Parsons. My message today to the board and to our governor and state legislators is paint it pink. I've seen the high-speed rail depictions of a shiny, sleek, blue and gold um, train coursing down the state. Well, that train, if you go ahead and build it for $100 billion, should be painted pink to represent the pink slips given to the following. March 2011, 19,000 teacher pink slips. October 2011, 26,000 state corrections pink slips. November 2011, 1,200 Bureau of Narcotic Enforcement pink slips. Furloughs, pay cuts abound, and yet we're planning to divert money from our general fund of finance and ill-planned project. How irresponsible. It's unfair to raise college tuitions as much as 20% a year and build the rail on the backs of our children. Yep, pink's the right color. It will serve as a constant reminder to our children and grandchildren, yours, Mr. Van Art, yours, Mr. Umberg, and we will all be riding the high-speed rail to pink slips. Thank you, Ms. Oliveira. <laughs> Mr. Glenn Parsons, then Janine Parsons, then Brent Parsons. I respectfully request equality of my other speakers with a minute and a half worth of time. I have a minute and a half worth of comments, and to correct you, I'm addressed as Dr. Glenn Parsons. Uh, I teach economics and finance at the university level and am full-time employed as a university administrator, and we are, uh, with the path of this railway, going to lose five homes within my family along with a 100-year-old farm. And the Kings County Board of Supervisors has heard from us the citizens of Kings County and has resolved unanimously to oppose the Kings to do oppose the rail system through Kings County and have found just before expiration of the inadequate 60 day review period rather than respond to a flood of requests for extensions over the comment period the authority without evaluating the impacts issued a statement that it intends to retain the 60 day comment period for the environmental statement proceed with a separate or said in Fresno section of the environmental statement to reintroduce an alternative route, the Hanford West Bypass alternative, along with the alternative station location to serve the Kings County Tulare region and then issue a revised draft ER supplemental statement. Thank draft. you, Dr. And Parsons. And Fresno and um, next, Bakersfield section. Ms. Janine Parsons. May I have equal to the other people that spoke? We'd ask Ms. Janine Parsons to We are clear forward. that I do not get equal right. time. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Janine Parsons, followed by Mr. Brent Parsons. Uh, 
I'm with uh, Citizens of California High Speed Rail Accountability. I'm also a resident of Kings County, and I agree with um, what Mr. Parsons has said. The legislature should consider the current proposal will destroy family farms and local agricultural economies. The draft EIR EIS does not address the cost for providing new access points for property owners whose access is cut off to public roadways. It does not address the relocating cost of irrigation piping. It does not address the cost to individual property owners who are spending their own money to obtain legal representation to protect their rights. It does not also address the cost of lost agricultural production. Let's say the current high-speed rail proposal is likened to a can of nuts attractively packaged and given to the citizens of California. The citizens of California open the can of nuts, but instead of finding nuts or what was projected or proposed, out jumps a snake. When will the surprises end? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Brent Parsons, followed by um, Kaylin Hill and Dakota Hill. Good morning. I'm Brent Parsons, member of uh, Kings County. Uh, I heard it mentioned that uh, the beautiful Golden Gate Bridge was built uh, with government funds and what a fine project this was. I also travel to Los Angeles and go down there and look at some canals that are supposed to hold water for LA. And I often think what a beautiful monument that is to the mis use of funds, government funds, empty canals which only serve as Hollywood backdrops for movies. This is another fine example of good government making wise decisions on our behalf. I've heard it proposed that this is all about jobs, that this great rail project will bring jobs to the Central Valley. I know of a farm that hires people to come in and spray, people to come in and pick, people to irrigate. All these things, all these jobs will be gone because this, jo this farm will no longer be big enough to support itself. Thank, thank you, Mr. Parsons. Uh, Ms. Kaylin Hill. Followed by Dakota Hill. Good day and thank you. My name is Kaylin Hill. I'm a wife and a mother and uh, I just look out for my sons and uh, I don't want to see that either and I hope that uh, you do not build this rail uh, because I'm unemployed and you know it's awful to do this to our kids I mean sustainability and all that development this is crazy and if you guys want to put up that rail I think this is a bunch of ego and no humility and I'll give somebody else my time you guys got ego you're easy got out and you're not even trying to see how it's affecting everybody's life thank you stop this project. I'm sorry. Uh, Dakota Hill, followed by Cindy Kelly. Hi, I'm Dakota Hill. Um, I'm a Fresnonian and is unsure for the future of California, my city, my country, even myself, if this project goes through. My mom always said I had a hole in my pocket, and apparently our legislature does too. Wanting to spend money we don't even have. We get this money, you're getting this money from education, our education, my generation, our services, and our law enforcement. Instead of taking jobs that we barely have, how about you find a better way to spend the money and spend the money and create and preserve our jobs, our lives, and best of all, our future. Your kids, my generation, is our future. And you want to put a bond on our future? bond and you want to fund this big idea the HISR and the cost of destroying our future stop this project please Miss uh, Cindy Kelly followed by Christine Middlestead followed by Sandy Newman 
My name is Cindy Kelly, and I am a walnut farmer in Kings County. The new western alignment goes right through our walnut growth and our house, as I, as I can tell. The questions I have for my little piece of property are overwhelming. We are also adjacent to an irrigation ditch where, we've received, where we got water almost all summer. It was awesome. How will we deal with this uh, irrigation issue uh, when I spray pesticides, um, harvesting? And, and the thing that I don't understand is when you divide it in half, the access to the back part of our property, we're surrounded by three other property owners. There are no public access ways to the back of our property. How will that be addressed? How will the irrigation issues be addressed? The fact is the state of California is broke. We are releasing prisoners. We, um, we don't have the money to do this. Thank you. Um, Ms. Uh, Sandy Newman, followed by Beverly Rodriguez. Sandy Newburn uh, from Central Valley, Hanford. You know, this sounds like a fake it till you make it thing. It's kind of real half-baked, and I can really sympathize with all the people in the Central Valley that are going to be hurt by it. doesn't sound like anybody's going to benefit except for maybe the construction companies and big fat cats that are making millions of dollars off of it. Governor, I think you need to stop this project. California doesn't have the money. You're not going to have the ridership. You compare this to the East Coast where they have small distances and a lot of people. We have large distances and not that many people. You people on the West Coast want this in the big cities. Run it down the Pacific Coast Highway. You know, put it in your own backyard. We don't want it here. It's messing up our farms. It's messing up our lives. It's messing up our families. We need the funding for schools. We need the funding for the fire and police protection. We need to keep the prisoners in prison where they belong. Or maybe we can put them on the high-speed rail and send them to you guys. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Rodriguez, followed by Shirley Stokes, followed by Raymond Swanson. Hello. My name is Beverly Rodriguez from Kings County, and I'm a Tea Party um, patriot. Uh, Amtrak re recently announced that they had the highest ridership in history, 27.8 million passengers over an 11th month period, mostly of which is in densely populated East Coast. Yet, you claim that the high-speed rail statewide system will outdo the entire nation with 36.1 million riders in 2026, just in California. And that's from, section, uh, that's from the EIREIS -E Section 2.5 uh, Travel Demand and Ridership Forecast. Uh, you then project that this is to balloon to 69 million in 2035, even though you have no guarantees of funding to complete more than two sections of non-operational rail track from Merced to Bakersfield. Your ridership projects projections can't be considered realistic when they ex eclipse the whole nationwide ridership trend. Thank you, ma'am. It will have to be subsidized like Ms. Amtrak, Ms. and we here uh, in the state, is we are broke. That's Ms. Stokes, broke. followed by <laughs> Mr. Swanson. Ms. Stokes? Stokes? Stokes, yes. Followed by uh, Mr. Raymond Swanson. Mm. I'm Shirley Stokes. I'm from uh, Kings County. The current I want to address this to Governor Brown and the legislatures and to you. The current proposal will all result in a massively negative impact on the state's budget and it will impact local communities and farms. Proposition 1A is nothing but a scam and a lie. Since I have a little bit of time left, <laughs> vote no on it. and. Um, this rail is supposedly could come through my street and wipe out my brother's dairy and the house I live in and about six or seven houses on the road. Thank you very much. Mr. Mr. Swanson, Mr. Waters.
Ray Swanson, Lamore, California, Kings County. I just recently finished a 30-day cross-country and traveled over 7,000 miles using Amtrak. Had a great time. Amtrak service may ultimately be sacrificed as the lack of future funding may force the hand of the HSR to switch Amtrak over to a partially built rail line. This would serve to eliminate two of the most used Amtrak stations in, in California, and that's in Hanford and Corcoran. The San Joaquin route is Amtrak's fifth busiest in the U.S. with approximately one mile, or excuse me, one million riders annually. Compound the loss of local lead ridership, alternative transportation access, and you have a, cum a, cum a cumulative economic impact that ripples across our communities. What is the estimated economic economic impact to our Kings County communities if these Amtrak stations are eliminated. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Waters, followed by Mr. Alan Scott. Uh, Dr. Charles Waters from Fresno. I uh, stand before you, you're a very, very angry uh, veteran. This state took away the few dollars we had to run the veteran home in Fresno. It's so damn broke. So I'm telling you, we are angry. The other thing, I'm also the vice president and CEO of a farming company in Fresno, one of the largest down there, and this thing would destroy agriculture. Use your minds. Remember, you work for the people. We elected these officials, and by God, they work for us. I resented the hell out of what the, the treatment that some of these people are getting here. This is not a dictatorship. This is a democracy, a republic. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Scott, uh, followed by Ms. Kathy Jones, then Karen Stout. Mr. Scott? All right. Uh, Ms. Kathy Jones, followed by Karen Stout. I'm Kathy Jones. I own a business in Hanford, California. The project does not confirm with the county's general plan and related ordinance, and prior to release of the draft environmental impact report, environmental impact statement for the Fresno to Bakersfield section of the project, the authority and the FRA assured Kings County Board of Supervisors that local planning issues and health, safety, and welfare concerns would be addressed in the DEIR. But it has not been done despite detailed correspondence presented to the authority and the FRA and introduced in attempted coordination meetings by Kings County Board of Supervisors. According to your EIR report and from what I've seen of the designated stations, our businesses in Hanford would lose $11 million a year in revenue. I hope Governor Brown, the legislature, and this board willing to give us $11 million a year because that's what it's going to cost the, us, just the small businesses in Hanford alone. This is a job killer, not a job doer. My name is Karen Stout. I'm speaking to Governor Brown and the legislators. They should know that the draft EIR EIS proposes that the Bakersfield to Fresno section will not initially be electrified. This is a violation of Prop 1A, which requires an electrified high speed train system. Uh, to you, um, why have you not been working with Kings County officials? Why doesn't the draft EIR EIS address the cost or the time delayed in replacing affected groundwater wells. Permanent crops like my walnut trees cannot go without water. This will also affect their pipelines. These items are not addressed in the EIR EIS. Uh, stop this project. Too many things have not been addressed. Too many large expenses have not been calculated. The state cannot afford to commit one million dollars in a doomed project. Uh, Mr. Mr. Browning, then Ms. Sullivan, then Mr. Michael Lamb. I think all of you are from California High Speed Rail Accountability. Good morning. I question 
if the governor and the body of legislators are fully aware that the draft environmental impact report and environmental impact statement indicates that if the entire high-speed train system anticipated, envisioned, and authorized by Prop 1A is not built out as anticipated, the track for the Bakersfield to Fresno section will have independent utility status for Amtrak purposes and will qualify under the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, which fund, uh, funding requirements of that act. This completely ignores the local investment in the existing transportation hub and intermodal connectivity and planning, as well as economic impacts on the affected downtown and the air quality and greenhouse gas impacts created by altering the existing hubs. I want to thank all of you gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, for being here today. Oh, we missed him again. And particularly, I'd like to thank the two members up there who are, at least look like you're paying attention. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Ms. Sullivan, uh, Mr. Lamb, and then uh, Mr. Dennis Berg. Good morning, I think. It's still morning. I'm Helen Sullivan, and I'm a resident of Kings County. My statement today is directed to the governor and to the legislature. The Fresno to Bakersfield EIR and its supporting technical documents combine to form a volume of more than 30,000 pages, yet the authority provided only 40, a 45-day comment period with a token 15-day extension. We were not given a realistic amount of time to real, read, evaluate, and comment on this enormous amount of data, data that directs the construction of the largest and now at an estimated price tag of $100 billion, the most costly project ever undertaken in our state, a project that in the end is doomed to fail both economically and logistically, a project that needs to be stopped now. Thank you. We have um, four more um, individuals who wish to make public comment, and I understand there's some late cards that came in. Anyone who filed a card after 10.30 uh, should go ahead and, and write up whatever it is they wanted to say and submit it to the, to the board. All right, Mr. Berg. Oh. Whoops, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm sorry. Mr. Lamb. Yes. 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 Thank you. My name is Michael Lamb. I'm here today to, uh, to uh, address uh, some concerns of the high-speed rail. I am a, uh, not only am I a seasoned citizen, I'm a senior citizen, I'm a retired United States Marine, 27 years with the Marine Corps. The concerns over the, 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 concerns over the cost, infrastructure, uh, uh, intrusion by foreign governments, freight and safety, are in, uh, in, light of the, in light of all these, I want to remind you, we, we have a current system that does carry passengers and freight. Uh, all over the all, all over the thing. One can only wonder if this movement, this high-speed rail movement, is a is a is a part of the UN Agenda 21. Is there anything about high-speed rail is uh, overruns or high speed? The authority's lack of transparency and its failure to resolve uh, to resolve the issues demonstrates uh, the, the ignorance of the lack uh, the ignorance of the will of the people when they vote for Proposition 1A. Uh, and it's ask, and it's act now, forgiveness leader approach uh, uh, to the Kings County Board of Supervisors can only be Thank viewed you. as a snub. Thank you, to Mr. Lamb. <laughs> Mr. Berg, followed by um, Carol uh, Campo Donica, I think. Hi, Dennis Berg, River Valley Tea Party Pagers. And amazingly enough, I'm going to provide you with a slightly different perspective. Just for the record, I have personally experienced one of the fastest trains in the world, downtown Shanghai to Pudong Airport and back on a maglift rail going 263 miles an hour. It was truly a remarkable experience, but the train was almost empty. I'm a, as a retired airline pilot, a serious flaw exists in your plan under the title of safety, security, and redundancy. In the airline world, we literally live and die by these three principles. Statistically, 37% of aircraft accidents occur on takeoff and landing, leaving 63% occurring off the airport. In the world of railroads, 100% of the accidents happen on the rails. 
When an aircraft has an accident on the runway, there's often additional runways on the field that can accommodate arrival and departing aircraft. The runway is closed for hours, not days. Runways are very difficult to destroy. However, a railway accident, oftentimes much track is destroyed and damaged, shutting down the line for days, if not weeks. Thank you for Thanks, your kind attention. Uh, Ms. Uh, Capodonica, followed by Mr. Daniel Krauss. And then finally, uh, last speaker is Karen, uh, I believe it's Chappelle. My name is properly pronounced Carol Campadonica, and I'm from Merced County. Uh, Forty-one percent is um, does not is unemployed. Uh, you're going to take 16th Street. A um, lot of the businesses there are new, and a lot of people are going to become unemployed. Do you know the businesses in California have been leaving five a week? So that means a lot of houses are in foreclosures because of it. The second thing is four businesses a week left last year. How come, how do you expect to pay for this rail when that many people are leaving California? There are other people who are leaving California because they don't want to pay for the rail. Two, and the next thing is that you're going to use more energy you're going to have more dirt flying everywhere on uh, the people. Uh, ah. okay. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Campodonica. You want to give me your time. Yeah. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Krauss. Thank, thank you, Mr. Krauss. Okay. Then, then uh, Ms. Uh, Chappelle. What did she say? Okay. All right, Mr. Krause. I uh, Thank you. I'm Daniel Krause, California's for High Speed Rail. Um, I just want to talk about the assumptions that the, uh, the business plan's making. Overall, we think it's a good, solid plan. Unfortunately, we think it's, been, it's being too conservative. And we understand the need for con being conservative in the environment you're operating in, but it goes too far, creating a too pessimistic assumptions. So we are requesting that you add in the final draft of, um, a range of cost estimates based on what you have now, but also looking at something that's more optimistic. Um, and we feel there's a reason for optimism. The, the debate is shifting now from austerity to jobs nationwide. We think the funding is going to, people probably won't here believe me, but we think the funding situation is going to improve. Um, so we'd like to see the time, three, three assumptions in particular, the timeline of 2033, look at something sooner like 2028 or something in that range. That saves $20 billion. The inflation rate is crazy. 0.6 is the inflation rate now. Why are you looking at 3% average? Mr. Krause, thank you. something more optimistic on that. Thank you very Thanks. much. Final speaker, uh, Ms. Chappelle. My name is Karen Chappell. I come from Palo Alto. I have found this business plan and this entire Ms. process Ms. Chappelle, absolutely if you could just move a little appalling. bit closer to the microphone. I can't get much closer. Okay. My neck's not long enough. This entire process has been appalling. We were sold a pig in a poke. This has been a bait and switch. People voted for a $33 billion train that was going to be finished in 2020 or thereabouts. It's turned into a 98 billion climbing train. It's devastating the farming communities. It's proposing to devastate the peninsula and probably Southern California as well. This is stupid. This is just absolutely stupid. You all apparently drank the Kool-Aid. It's time to turn it off. It's time to go back and say, wait, we can't afford to do this. And even if we could, it's the wrong thing to do. Thank you. All right. Um.